Okay, working hard. Huan Ying, welcome. Good to see you again. We can learn so much from spending time with our elders. They enrich our lives by sharing their knowledge, expertise, and skills. And if you're looking for tradition and good and expensive food, try stopping in to an old-timer Chinatown restaurant. There is some great food on the way. But today, three is the magic number. Three delicious meals from three landmark restaurants in three busy Chinatowns. Look at this old menu. Back then, you could find some pretty good food in Chinatown for a pretty good price. And it's still true in today's Chinatowns. There are lots of classic Chinese dishes and well-known restaurants that have been popular for a long, long time. Wo Fat in Honolulu Chinatown is one of those classic places. These days, most restaurants try to come up with new dishes every week. But Wo Fat stays with wonderful oldies like stuffed scallops with taro root and sizzling braised oysters that I'm sharing with the owners, Ginny and George Lau. Every time I come and visit Honolulu Chinatown, always come to Wo Fat the oldest Chinese restaurant in Chinatown, Honolulu. You know what? Opened in 1888. Here on Washington Street in San Francisco, Sam Wong is a very small vertical restaurant that has been popular for more than a century. The food comes up and is served hot, delicious, and inexpensive. So the dumb waiter has to work overtime. Mr. Ho and I are having chow mein, wonton soup, and steamed rice noodle rolls. Two classics. Mmm, you won't live here. Hungry. Around the corner from Sam Wall, they're still making fortune cookies by hand. Some people say this is the very spot where fortune cookies were invented. They are the American tradition for Chinese restaurants. Look, all handmade and not that easy to do. You don't believe me, you come over here and try it. It is so hot, she is good. I am behind, I'm far behind. Now let's go across the continent to Mass Street. This is a classic place in New York Chinatown, Ah, War Hub. They've been here for hundreds of years, I mean, decades, and a lot of regular companies. But it's open 24 hours a day. Today, I'm having a quick lunch with my buddy, Richard. Oh, this is spicy. This is Richard. You told me this is your favorite. I'm going to pile this up because I know you can eat it and you can finish it. We better, we better hurry up and work. We better start working hard. Okay, I'm gonna try this too. This is a classic dish. One of the most fav famous dish in Wohab. How often do you come over here? Uh, at least once a month. You see the big humongous one ton? Shrimp, barbecue pork, squid, calamari, cannibal. And then we put all of these wonderful war one ton ingredients. You serve with broth, savory broth. This is war one ton. This is a classic. <laughs> this is enough for four people in China. You know? Whoa. For all these classic dishes, you gotta come to an old classic establishment like Wo Hub in New York Chinatown. <laughs> Nearby is the New York Chinatown Senior Center. They make over 300 nutritious lunches for the seniors every day. That's a lot of stir frying and steaming. And look, there's a new assistant cook. In a traditional Chinese household, different generations all live under the same roof. The older folks are taken care of by their children. Here, the seniors are more independent. They socialize with their friends and neighbors. 
They can play cards or mahjong. And there are classes in everything from nutrition to Chinese opera. Hey, time for lunch. The senior center, War Fat, Sam War, War Hub are held together by the word war, which in Cantonese means togetherness or harmony. In Chinese, there's a saying, yi wo wai guai, that means war, means togetherness and harmony is precious. That's the reason why you say war. That's the reason why some war, war fought, <laughs> uh, war, all kind of war. We're all together. Today, I'm glad because you and I, we are together. That is precious. And now I bit up about six to eight eggs. We'll make egg fuyong, old timers recipe. I'm gonna put it right over here. And then also have some green onion. I'm gonna thinly shred a green onion. You see? Now, this is how you do it. You see this? Very nice, thinly shredded. This is how thinly shred this is. Look at this, very thin, like this. And we'll put it all together. Use this as a spatula. Knife is a great spatula. And then cut it up into little pieces and put it on the other side. Now I want to show you how quickly it is to do this particular dish. All you have to do is beat up the egg, put some of these bean sprout. I call silver sprout because the root is already removed. Some shredded barbecue pork. You can use ham, you can use shrimp. That's why you go to an old timer Chinese restaurant or green onion. You can order a variety of dish with uh, the name egg fuyong. You can have shrimp fuyong, chicken fuyong, barbecue for pork fuyong, or just vegetarian fuyong, okay? We put more because I love this, okay? And then a tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of pepper, that's all you need. If you want to make it nice, you can put a also a tiny bit of chopped garlic, little chopped garlic. And then we're gonna make this egg fuyong. Because today we're gonna make something very, very special. Not just one fuyong for one person. We're making three fuyong. First, put a tiny bit of oil in this frying pan, okay? A little bit of oil. Make sure you coat the entire cooking surface. And then you put this egg mixture with all this vegetable. Look at this. Put it right over here. Mmm. Put it right over here. This is going to be big. I love big because you need texture. Oh, this is beautiful. In the meantime, while I'm doing this, I'm going to make the sauce. I have some broth here. Whoa, some broth here. Tiny bit of sesame seed oil. And a tiny bit of oyster flavor sauce. Oh, and a tiny bit of wine. Mmm, tiny bit of wine. If you want to have an extra touch of flavor contrast, tiny bit of sugar or honey. And then a tiny bit of five spice powder. This is very unique. I learned it from the chef, huh? from Sam War and also War Fat and War Hub. In Chinatown, New York, the chef tell me all the secret. Okay, look at this. I'm gonna turn this around. Mmm, pan fry this, pan fry this, and make sure this is hot enough, okay? Make sure it's hot enough. And then I want to add some extra texture to it. The chef and Wo Hop, Fat, they never do. Leftover, I put them all in. Leftover, I put all of this in. Because I don't want to waste them, okay? No waste at all. Oh, make a lot of sauce and thicken this up. It doesn't take too long to cook. You don't want to overcook them, okay? You want lightly cooked uh, vegetable so they got the nice texture, okay? Whoa. And then put a tiny bit of soy sauce to give the color. This is color. This is beautiful. And then when this is done, you serve it over. And I want to show everybody how fast you can do this. Look at this. Oh, this is it. I'm going to transfer this and turn this upside down. Mm, look at this. Look at this. Upside down. Oh, hey. Make sure they're upside down, okay? A little bit. 
This is a lot of food right here. Look at how beautiful this is, huh? Look at this. This is beautiful. Unbelievable. When this is nice and done, I'm going to show you how to serve the whole thing. This is the way to serve. Make sure this is thick enough, okay? Oh, beautiful. This is cornstarch, oyster sauce, sesame seed oil, extra touch of white pepper. Look at this. And then we are going to serve this. I'm going to show you how easy it is to serve this. Here's a plate. And I have one uh, big omelet here. And then I'm going to have the sauce. Put it right over here. This is very different than what the chef had been doing. And then I have another omelet here. Oh, this is triple deck. Look how beautiful. Right over here. Okay? And then I have another omelet right on top. Beautiful. The one that I just finished. And then I have more sauce. Put it right on top. <laughs> Look at that. Huh? Very different. Very unique. We make sure we don't lose all of these. And this dish is done. Giant triple deck. Egg foo young. Oh, cut up some onion. I love onion. Now, for those of you who have ever visited Louisiana, particularly New Orleans, you probably know every single restaurant besides crayfish and crawfish, oh, you know what they have? A lot of oyster. That's what I love. I hope you like it. Here, I have some oyster. I'm going to show you how to make a wonderful oyster dish the Chinese have been cooking for years in all the old-timer restaurants. Here is oyster. These are oyster from British Columbia, like this, about this size. This oyster, I think, is from Australia and Hong Kong. Whoa, beautiful, big. Look at the size difference. This is the little one. This is the baby one, granddaddy of the oyster. Now, when you use oyster, the first thing is a lot of water in the oyster. So what you have to do is put a tiny bit of salt, put a tiny bit of cornstarch here first, okay? And then I want partially water Blanch this means I boil this a little bit. Get rid of some of the milky stuff. And then also, to flavor a little bit, little piece of ginger, cut the little piece up, and I go, ha, huh, like that. Ginger, green onion, and then marinated this oyster a little bit. Look at this. Make sure this is cooked a little bit. They shrink, because there's a lot of water in oyster. By doing this, you're basically shrinking it, okay? You know, Chinese use oyster in a lot of things. They stir fry, they put in casserole, they do a lot of things. And I'm gonna take this out. Why I'm boiling this, I'm gonna stir fry all the vegetable. Here, I heat up the wok, or frying pan, or even saute pan. Put a tiny bit of oil, and put all of this wonderful ingredient in. Garlic and ginger, huh? stir. See, now I'm using my chopstick as a stirler. Green onion. Onion and pepper. Whoa, look at all of this. Stir fry. This is what you call stir fry. Look at very simple, very easy. In the meantime, I heat up a sizzling plate and get ready for our dish. Okay? And everybody can do this. Oh, this is fragrant. And this is also ready. You see, they shrink already. Make sure they cook a little bit, and I can tell you, this is already shrink. You see, very simple. After shrink, I put this over here. Look at this. You don't have to cook it for too long because you don't want to overcook them. This is just the right size, the right amount, okay? You put them all together like this. Look at that. Now, drain this. You see the water, a lot of water coming out, you see? And then we put this right over here. Whoa, sizzling. And then we put a tiny bit of wine. Whoa. Nice. And then a tiny bit of broth. I want to make a sauce. A tiny bit of fish sauce because it's seafood. Just a few drops of fish sauce. A uh, tiny bit of oyster flavor sauce. The Chinese chef have been using this for at least 150 years. For color, 
put a tiny bit of soy sauce. Oh, and then you thicken it up with a tiny bit of cornstarch solution. One portion of cornstarch to about two to three portion of liquid. You know what? This is so colorful, so beautiful. You know, the dish is ready. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to serve these, okay? Let's put all of these over here, because everybody can see this, okay? Oyster, and then I use this sizzling plate. Wow, very hot. Of course, this, at home, you can actually use a cast iron frying pan to do this. And listen to this. Whoa! This is what we have here. Sizzling ginger scallion oysters. I'm putting some fish mousse. This is a very unique war wonton I'm making for you. Some fish mousse. This is the filling for my wonton. Some chopped shrimp, Chinese celery, green onion, ginger, and look at this. Tangerine peel, aged tangerine peel. The more aged, the older it is, the more flavor, the more fragrant. Then mix them all up, put a tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of salt, and a tiny bit of pepper, and a tiny bit of egg white, if you want, tiny bit of egg white. Mix them all up, look at this. Mix them all up, this is a blender. <laughs> That's what I'm using, the chopstick for everything, all purpose. And then I'm gonna show you how to fold the one ton. Here, I have some one ton wrappers, thin one ton wrapper. In the market, you can buy thick one ton wrapper, regular one ton, or thin, this very, very thin, look at this, very thin. The Chinese chef love thin one ton wrappers because it's less doughy. And then I use a spoon, thinner spoon, and I do it like this. Okay, put it right in the middle. Put a tiny bit of egg wash right here. Egg wash right here, you see this? And then you fold into a triangle like this. Triangle, triangle like this. And then, now you have a triangle. And then you put a tiny bit of egg wash. Twist this backward like this, you see? Backward, right here. You have one ton, okay? I'm gonna make two tons, okay? Now, here is another way the Chinese chef have been doing it in Chinese wonton noodle restaurants. This is how they do it. You put this right over here, okay? Just one flat teaspoon. And then you hold on to this, and you use your hand. You go like this. You push this, you see this? You push, and you use your knife. You see this? You push, 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 squeeze, push, push, and you have a wonton like this. All close in like that. That's another one ton that the Chinese rest restaurant use. Now this, if you want to deep fry it, this is how you do it. Put it right in the middle, right here, just a little bit, right in the corner here. Put a tiny bit of egg wash here. Push this in. Now this is good for deep frying because a lot more one ton wrappers around. And then you put a tiny bit of these egg wash. You twist this. You can you see the difference? Look at this. Now this has a lot of dough, wrapper, and very little meat, and this is just the opposite. Now, this is for the hungry, this is for the diet conscious, okay? Now, the next thing I wanna show everybody is, you had to quickly parboil the wonton before you make the wonton soup. So we'll put the wonton right here. Oh, parboil the wonton. In the meantime, we we'll put all the ingredients for our raw wonton. Why they call war one ton? You can have one ton soup, but today we're making war one ton. War means a whole pot, it's a one dish meal. With barbecue pork, and also, look at this, snow pea, shrimp, shrimp already cut up and deveined. Squid rings, little ring, scallop. This is very, very nice. This is a tall old timer. Even the old timer learn how to appreciate food. Put a tiny bit of salt, put a tiny bit of Pepper, whoa, look at this. Flavor it, and also a tiny, tiny bit of mm -hmm, sesame seed oil. And, now this is a wonderful broth. This is the old timer broth, from canned broth. 
but I want to show you, you can, when you do it at home, you can actually make your own chicken broth, the whole chicken. Tiny bit of soy sauce, nice and rich, okay? And I think the one ton is almost ready. I want to make sure they cook properly, okay? Now, I want to show you, how are you going to handle the squid? This is a squid right here, okay? Very, very simple. First, you cut this open, okay? Open like this, and then you get a bowl. Get some water, okay? Get some water right here. Make sure you can wash your hand, okay? This is water. I want to show you. Remove these, remove these, put it right here, and there is a little backbone here. Remove these, and you use your knife to scrape this. It's a nice, clean piece. And then for the Chinese, you know how they do it? They hold on to this, and they go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Huh? They score the inside like this, and they cut into little pieces. When you open this up and boil it, they co-open up really nicely. Look, hey, the one that is definitely ready. Scoop it out and put it right over here, and then we're going to get ready to serve. Look at this. Get a nice bowl. Get one of these strainers so you can scoop them all up at the same time, very fast. Warm one time means a one-dish meal. Got protein, starch, and everything. Everything is right here. Serve a tiny bit of broth. Now this is the old timer stuff, but I'm gonna show you a little bit about. This is the rich man's one ton right here with the whole chicken to make chicken broth. There, we did it again. Old timer war one ton soup. And now you can be an old timer and pass on this savory tradition to your family and friends. Remember, if Yen can cook all this war one ton, so can you. And I say, Jajen! <laughs>